Aesop Fables, Volume Two. Belling the Cat. Long ago, the mice had a general council to consider what measures they could take to outwit their common enemy, the cat. Some said this, and some said that. But at last, a young mouse got up, and he said he had a proposal to make, which he thought would meet the case. You will all agree," said he, "that our chief danger consists in the sly and treacherous manner in which the enemy approaches us. Now, if we could receive some signal of her approach, we could easily escape from her. I venture, therefore, to propose that a small bell be procured and attached by a ribbon round the neck of the cat. By this means, we should always know when she was about. And could easily retire while she was in the neighborhood. This proposal met with general applause until an old mouse got up and said, "That is all very well, but who is to bell the cat?" The mice looked at one another, and nobody spoke. Moral: It is easy to propose impossible remedies. The wolf and the kid. A kid was perched up on the top of a house and, looking down, saw a wolf passing under him. <laughs> Immediately, the kid began to revile and attack his enemy. Murderer and thief! He yelled at the wolf. What are you doing here near honest folks' houses? How dare you make an appearance where your vile deeds are known? Those are bold words," said the wolf. I don't think you would be so courageous if you were down here with me. Moral: It is easy to be brave from a safe distance. The fox and the leopard. The fox and the leopard disputed which was the more beautiful of the two. The leopard exhibited one by one the various spots which decorated his skin, but the fox, interrupting him, said, "And how much more beautiful than you am I, who am decorated not in body but in mind." Moral: True beauty comes from within. The eagle and the beetle. A beetle once begged the eagle to spare a hare which had run to her for protection, but the eagle pounced upon her prey, the sweep of her great wings tumbling the beetle a dozen feet away. Furious at the disrespect shown her, the beetle flew to the eagle's nest and rolled out the eggs. Not one did she spare. The eagle's grief and anger knew no bounds, but who had done the cruel deed she did not know. Next year, the eagle built her nest far up on a mountain crag, but the beetle found it and again destroyed the eggs. In despair, the eagle now implored great Jupiter to let her place her eggs in his lap. There, none would dare harm them, but the beetle buzzed about Jupiter's head and made him rise to drive her away. And the eggs rolled from his lap. Now the beetle told the reason for her action, and Jupiter had to acknowledge the justice of her cause. And they say that ever after, while the eagle's eggs lie in the nest in spring, the beetle still sleeps in the ground, for so Jupiter commanded. Moral: Even the weakest may find means to avenge a wrong. The donkey and the wolf. A donkey feeding in a meadow saw a wolf approaching to seize him, and immediately pretended to be lame. The wolf, coming up, inquired about the cause of his lameness. The donkey replied that passing through a hedge, he had trod with his foot upon a sharp thorn. He requested that the wolf pull it out, lest when he ate him it should injure his throat. The wolf consented and lifted up the foot, and was giving his whole mind to the discovery of the thorn, when the donkey, with his heels, kicked the wolf's teeth into his mouth, and galloped away. The wolf, being thus fearfully mauled, said, "I am rightly served. 
For why did I attempt the art of healing when my father only taught me the trade of a butcher? Moral No one relates honestly to those they fear. The City Mouse and the Country Mouse When the City Mouse went to visit his cousin in the country, the City Mouse was very disappointed with the sparse meal, which was nothing more than a few kernels of corn and a couple of dried berries. My poor cousin, said the City Mouse, you hardly have anything to eat. Please come to the city with me, and we will have a great feast for every meal. So the country mouse left with his city cousin, who brought him to a splendid feast in the house where he lived. The country mouse could not believe his eyes. There was a feast of bread, cheese, and fruit laid out on the table. The two mice settled down to eat their wonderful dinner, but before they barely took their first bites, the city mouse yelled, Run! The cat is in the house! The cat gave chase as the two mice scampered into a small hole in the wall, barely avoiding the cat's sharp claws. After the cat went away, the two mice cautiously came out of the hole and resumed their abundant feast. Before they could get a proper taste in their mouth, the lady of the house came in. She screamed in anger and chased the mice with a stick. The two mice again ran away to the small hole in the wall, barely missing the lady's stick. Goodbye, said the country mouse. You do indeed live a plentiful life, but I am going home where I can enjoy my humble dinner in peace. Moral It is better to live the simple life in peace than to live in luxury in fear. Moral